What's up, everyone? It's Chicks in the Office with Rhea and Fran giving you that Friday energy on a Friday. How are we doing, Francesca? Happy Friday. Happy weekend. Happy Friday. It hit me right in the face yesterday that it's June. Yeah. Not on June 1st, but yesterday, yesterday. I was like, oh, fuck, it's June. Flying by. I just need to get on the beach. Um, the weather looks nice this weekend. I need to get on the beach. I'm having one of those days. Mm-hmm. Like an Eeyore day where yeah. everything's just bothering you and you're just like, oh, I can tell. I got the sniffles. Yeah. I'm getting my period. Mm. I didn't put any makeup on today because I just was lazy. I mm-hmm. went to the dentist. They tore oh. my teeth apart so my mouth hurts. You could have started with I got that. a pimple. <laughs> it's a tough day. It's a tough day. But you're going to get through it because yep, this weekend yep. the weather looks it's get, I just beautiful. need some sunshine. Yeah. We're going to get some sun. We're going to get good old UV, vitamin D. The UV rays are going to be popping this weekend. We're going to get that sun in our veins and we're going to be feeling yeah. good. I'm feeling good about the weekend. I'm feeling good about the weeks to come. Although <sighs> something's been happening on my TikTok that is very concerning. On your on your TikTok? On my TikTok, on my For You page. It is very concerning. Every single TikTok, every single one, yeah, is just people card reading. They're you know, Ooh, the, like tarot card reading. Yeah, tarot okay. card readings to me, or signs to you. Not they just oh, say oh, this oh, is for oh, you, oh, oh. or here's this sign that this is happening, mm. or manifest this. Every single one, and I'm getting very confused. With all the signs I'm getting. Mm. I feel like I'm my I'm just scrolling through my for you page for hours, taking all these signs in that are not well, even well, directly to yeah, me. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. You can't be taking you. that though. I know, but they trick you and they're like, if you scrolled past this, this means this sign was for you. And then I, I watch it, I'm like, Oh, that relates. Yeah. But I You and every other person who just I, scrolled past it though. I know. Like you and like an eighty year old, not that I mean maybe there's a bunch of eighty year olds on TikTok, but like you and an eighty year old man could be watching the same tiktok i don't know if that you're getting the same life messages we we are getting the same life messages through the tiktok but probably not relating in any way shape or form in real life it's a problem i don't know what happened why this is happening on my for you page it's not like i'm seeking it out it's just non-stop it's killing me i i don't you got to go through a a re a rebrand like you got to start liking other videos i don't like any of those videos i don't know i know know how they came on i i never liked the beauty and and skincare ones but it's all i get and i don't like any of them i had to actively go like like other stuff this is fucked up but it shows you how much tiktok is listening to you i think it's because i've been spending a lot of time with my sister Mm mm-hmm and she is very into all of that but it's not like we've been talking about it constantly but that's like her entire vibe it's all her whole apartment is is covered in crystals and she has the cards and she's always playing frequency youtube well, your phone videos. is listening to you so and i think that they think it's me right and the phone is just feeding all of this to me and it's confusing my life yeah I think that's exactly what's happening. It's taken a toll on my life. The phone is just soaking it all in. Soaking it all in at all times. Crystals. It's crazy. I'm like, do they, they got the wrong person for you, Paige. Yeah. They meant to tap into my sister's, but they're tapping into mine. Yes. And that's also a slippery slope for you because um, you'll start taking those things to heart. I have been taking them to heart. You know I have been. (laughs) I've been no I know I think you're gonna start taking actual (laughs) life advice from these TikToks and that's not a good idea no it's a very dangerous path I'm on it's like it's like this this letter person is thinking of you and it's like Z I've never met a person in my life with Z and I'm thinking in my head like never met a Zach I probably have but I know no one in my life named Zach is pretty prominent yeah either way I think maybe I just need to stop scrolling tiktok or stop spending so much time with my sister because the signs the messages everything i'm receiving is too much now and i don't know where to go too strong i don't know which way is left which way is right which way is wrong which way is right Right. again but i don't (laughs) want to repeat myself (laughs) fuck (laughs) left right wrong and right oh that was bad up down yep all Uh, around whatever i just uh it's 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 becoming too much and i want back to funny things okay yeah. you know like last night i do the same thing every single night every single night of my life is the same 
and I get into bed, I smoke a little bit, I get into bed, and then I think, mm, do I want to get up and eat something, <laughs> or do I just want to go to sleep? Yeah. Nine times out of ten, I'm getting up and eating something. I snacked way too much last night, too. And I had a full-on cheeseburger last night when I woke up. <laughs> like, I was like, I need... To be completely and, honest, I looked at that cheeseburger and was like, did she... Yeah, go did you downstairs make and make that no we had uh my pa- i was out on long island and my parents yeah. made uh cheeseburgers and hot dogs for dinner so I, oh okay so i that, knew yeah they, you knew they were down there i knew they were that's down there and i thing. couldn't even there was that's why there of hot dogs I which assumed, i already had three for dinner so i assume that's what happened because i saw the stories and was like you posted the you, which you drew very nicely by the way thank you the burger Put a lot of time your, into that. yeah you did that <laughs> very well like i was like oh she did a good job with that and i thought that that was the signal that you were like gonna order mcdonald's or something mm-hmm. and then you posted that burger i was like that's a beautiful burger did she just make that because i know that's not a mcdonald's burger no no i thought it almost looked like a mcdonald's burger when i saw it oh wow I didn't think so at all. To I didn't be honest. think so either. Did, it didn't did you have eat it the, cold? It didn't have the um, no, sesame I, seeds. No, I warmed on the it bun. up, and I think it's because the cheese wasn't melted all the way on that one that I picked. I think that's people had a problem with that. Bigger pickles as well. Yes, I love the bigger pickles. Exposed, you had it's, an exposed pickle. I did have and an you don't normally pickle. get an exposed pickle on a McDonald's burger. No, but it was just it was killing me. And then I went oh, opened up my TikTok. The first thing that popped up, I took a screenshot of it. The first something about like late night eating or something. It was literally <laughs> like. When I'm trying to eating healthy to get in shape for hot girl summer, getting stoned at 11 p.m. and eating the entire kitchen. It was like the and this was 11:27 yeah. p.m. It's like, yo, stop looking yeah. at my shit. They Feeling watched. They're um they're listening to everything. 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 I bet when I open up my TikTok later, yeah. it's going to be TikToks about how TikTok is listening to everything. Um, I haven't gotten a I haven't gotten this ad before, but I'm wearing these blue light glasses right now. Mhm. And I just opened their nectar and I just opened my phone and was going through my Instagram stories and ne- like literally like going through the Instagram stories, got a nectar, nectar ad. At I was this, like, I didn't even say the name out loud. Right. At this point, I'm like, um, take But I'm me. wearing them. Just take me, you know? Yeah, you know. They, you, they have everything. If you think you have any privacy, you're you wrong. Don't. You they don't. They have all of our information. Now they, now Apple has that thing too, where you like, they have the commercial about it. And it's always like you open an app and it's like, do you allow, like, will it allow you to track your data while you're using this other apps mm-hmm. or other apps to use your data in other apps? And yeah. you're just like, oh, so you're just taking everything. And it asks you, do you allow? Yeah. And I click don't allow, but I know they're taking it anyway. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It doesn't matter. Yeah. They, they, they need you to just click something yep. and they're going to take it no matter what. Absolutely. Whatever. The world is watching us at all times, and that's just uh, a matter of fact, guys. Get that through your head. You're never alone. Yep. There's someone always watching you. That'll help the people with uh, severe paranoia. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Let's get into Absolutely. the topics for today's show. We have a very fun show because we have Becca Tilly and Tanya yes. Rad, who we love and adore, and it's been love a long them. time coming. If you've been listening to us ever since the People's Choice Awards, yep. and you know that, we talk all about that. It was very funny, and they're so much fun. So we had a great time with them. Yeah. We are also going to be getting into the topics. David Spade will be filling in for Chris Harrison on Bachelor in Paradise in some capacity. Travis Barker is liking Shady comments about Amelia Gray and the double date they all went on. iCarly is officially coming back and we got a trailer to prove it. And we're going to give an update on the Francesca and Harry situation from Too Hot to Handle. I know we haven't talked about it before, but now that it seems like things are maybe dying down, maybe wrapping up, who fucking knows? I just watched watched it recently. Yes. Too Hot to Handle recently. So now I'm very involved in in their relationship. Yeah, just one year late. (laughs) Well, I was one year late, but I was... It was the same, came out the same day as Outer Banks. Yeah. And everybody knows how I felt about yeah, Outer Banks. Yeah, so yeah, Too Hot yeah. to Handle didn't have my attention at the time. But I just watched it and I liked it a lot. So yeah. let's get into it. Starting off with David Spade. We are constantly receiving DMs about if we have a FIGS discount code still. And ladies and gentlemen, I'm happy to inform you that we still do, guys. We are still working with FIGS. And FIGS celebrates the awesome healthcare professionals by making scrubs they actually want to wear. We've been talking about FIGS for a while now. My sister, she's surgical tech. She wears FIGS. She always talks about how comfortable they are. And when she found out that we were doing ads for FIGS, she was so excited. I still remember it to this day. So pumped 
scrubbed out because she was like, they really are the best scrubs out there. They're comfortable. They have great functionality. They got tons of pockets for whatever you got to throw in there. Figs are awesome. Obviously, we don't use figs, but just hearing other people use figs, I can tell how much people really love them. Figs makes modern scrubs with a focus on design, function, and comfort. Figs proprietary Phionics fabric is ridiculously soft with four-way stretch, moisture wicking, anti-wrinkle, and Silvador antimicrobial technology that inhibits odor producing microbes and increases durability. So these are all great things for your scrubs. And like I said, they got tons of pockets to throw whatever you need in there. As a healthcare professional, you got a lot of tools on you. Throw it in the pockets. There's at least, you know, they got some some with 10 plus in there and it's awesome. So if you are one of those awesome humans or you know somebody who works in the healthcare world, Figs wants you to wear the scrubs you deserve and enjoy 15% off your first order. So go to wearfigs.com. That's W-E-A-R-F-I-G-S.com and enter code CHICKS15 at checkout and you will get 15% off. So go to wearfigs.com, enter code CHICKS15 at checkout and you will get 15% off your scrubs. Get ready to love them. As we all know, Chris Harrison, not hosting The Bachelorette. You got Caitlin Bristow and Tasha taking charge for Katie's season. But then everyone was wondering what's going to happen with Bachelor in Paradise. Is yeah. I don't think Chris Harrison is ever coming back at this point. I, I feel like we've reached a point of no return. I don't know, maybe uh, further in the future. But it's, it seems like it seems like there may be bad blood. But it looks like David Spade. Yeah. Yes, you heard that correctly. David Spade is stepping in. We don't know if it's as the full host of the entire show, but he will be filling in for Chris Harrison in some capacity. At some point, yeah. And I'm really excited for this because, I mean, that's amazing. David Spade jumping into the Bachelor Bachelor universe. What did we do to deserve such a funny guy to step in? It's a good, it's a good way to break up Paradise. Like, Paradise is meant to be a lighthearted, fun show, and the host is really not involved in Paradise, like, at all. I, I, more, I would say, Bachelor and Bachelorette. Paradise, not so much. It's really fueled by the contestants. And David Spade is the first name that's that's been announced. Apparently, there's going to be other comedians and, and whatnot who are going to be in Mexico for this David Spade is also one of those guys that is a Bachelor fan. People probably don't know that. But I can recall going through, you know, articles or whatnot or seeing a tweet or seeing, like, something headline, like, 15 celebrities you would never guess watch The Bachelor. You know, like, this shit like that. And you would go and you look and it'd be, like, Amy Schumer. Like, it's, there's a whole list. David mm. Spade was always on there. So he's familiar with the franchise, like, he watches the shows, and he knows who these people are. So I think that's going to be very interesting, um, and he'll definitely have some very funny commentary. Yeah, I think that it, it's a great choice. I know that everyone was like, whoa, taken aback, but I think it's a good middle ground on what everybody wants from Bachelor in Paradise. I yeah. feel like the people Give who- us some laughs. Right. There are people who want Chris Harrison back. There are some people who don't want Chris Harrison back. But I think if you- put David Spade in the mix, yeah. everyone's happy because everyone's going to be laughing. Everyone will be having a good time. It won't be so serious. I do. I did see some people saying like it may turn into a parody type thing, which is fine by me because I feel like Paradise already has that type of feel with yeah. their intro song. You know, they it's very jokey. It's, it already seems like a parody. So, yeah, I mean, that's probably where I'm going to go all purist because it's like they actually have the some of the most success out of, of for couples mm -hmm. coming out of paradise, paradise than they do bachelor and bachelorette you know yeah but i don't think david spade's gonna stop anybody from being oh no together. no no i i i don't think that at all but i guess i see people being concerned that like it it'll be more haha -ha jokes and stuff than mm -hmm. it is like ooh, those people are like actually falling in love well, but I, that's like fine too. I, yeah, they'll still show both. I mean, at the end of the day, I doubt he's going to be involved so much. No, I, it's going to be, be like there for one episode. Right, for all he, we know, <laughs> he could be jumping in, throwing a few jokes, and yeah. then you don't see him for a whole other episode. So I think just having him involved in some way is also going to bring in 
a lot more viewers. Yeah. I mean, just talking to people around the office, some guys were like, hey, I might watch Bachelor in Paradise because David Spade's going to be yeah. in it. And thinking back to past seasons of Paradise, when was Chris Harrison was never really involved that much. Like There would be episodes where you would go through and he would pop up at the rose ceremonies and you'd be like, oh, Chris. It's like I kind of forgot he was even there because he's really not involved in Paradise that much at all. Right, so it'll just be a nice treat when David Spade jumps out of the bushes yeah. and tells a funny joke or two. Exactly. Travis Barker liked a shady comment about Amelia Gray this past week because Courtney Kardashian, Travis Barker, Scott Disick, Amelia Gray, I think they all went out to dinner. Uh, there were some photos of that. And somebody commented basically saying how does a 2001 baby mm -hmm. even fit in with this group of grown-ass adults it must have been awkward as hell yeah. i think there was something along those lines and travis barker liked the comment and i think that just confirms that it really must have been awkward because i think that and this i don't want to be throwing shade at amelia gray because I mean, she's a, a young girl, mm -hmm. and I, I don't know her at all. But you got three people who are way older. Yeah. And then she's 19 years old, and they're all sitting at dinner having a conversation. And yes, I think people in Hollywood or kids in Hollywood grow up faster, but that doesn't mean that their conversation is elevated. No, no, You know no, what I'm no. saying? I just feel like even if you are growing up fast and you experienced a lot yeah. of things at a young age, doesn't mean that you can necessarily sit at a table with a bunch of 40-year-olds and they're going to be very interested in having a conversation with you and vice versa. Yeah. Life is, it's just different, you know, it's just 19-year-old. It's just so different than the life that Travis Barker has lived and it just feels like something that they had to sit down and do um, for the kids. It's like, oh, like, you know, united front. Let's make sure the kids know that we're all getting along and Scott and Courtney and want to have all the kids there. And, well, okay, if S Scott's coming, then, hey, can I bring Amelia? And it's like, oh, Scott's bringing Amelia. So it's like, okay. So like Scott brings Amelia. And they just kind of have to, to grin and, and bear it a little bit. It's just it's hard to imagine that there's anything in common and and you can give the benefit of the doubt and like oh you know some young people like get along really well i think i adults. can have a conversation for hours with any of, of any age absolutely but that's just me being cocky about myself well think no i think i can too if you were in her shoes i always wanted to hang out with my parents at all their adult parties yeah same and i did i always yeah. just sat around throwing my two cents in yeah. do i think i'd be able like to if you were amelia um, I think I would, of course, be nervous because of who they are. It's Travis Barker. It's Kourtney Kardashian. Whoa. But at the same time, I th I think I would be able to hold my own conversation for sure. She could be trying to impress too. You or know, just like not even trying to impress or just quiet. Yeah. Like, yeah. I think a lot of times probably that she went and maybe was just quiet. That's how I picture it being. And then that turns into it being awkward. I mean, for anyone like, like having dinner with your like significant others right ex, regardless of weird. age is weird right. like, like amelia age doesn't even have to matter and yeah. that's still awkward exactly and amelia may be like not loving the fact that they're going out with courtney but yeah yeah they kind of have to do it and i yeah. think that was a problem with sophia yeah. and courtney and scott i think that that was talked about so it might be the same thing here and i kind of feel like travis barker has no interest in hanging out with 19 year old right girls like, I don't know why. I just feel like he it, he seems like a more mature type of dude. And how old? I mean, he's got daughters that you know, right like close to that age, too, right? So it's yeah. a totally different feel. Like, that's got to be kind of hard to mm -hmm. wrap your mind around in, in that kind of situation when you actually start to have children that are that age mm -hmm. and you have your... Uh, you're, you know, sitting at the at the dinner table with them. But it, it's and I think it's interesting because you watch this past season and you see how Scott's been talking about Courtney and how why things didn't work with Sophia. And 
you're like, well, then how does this work with Amelia? And Amelia must just be more like, yeah, Scott. Like, I understand. But, I, I, I you know, it's also different now, too, because I think that with Sophia involved, Courtney, like, wasn't really dating anyone. And I mean, Eunice, whatever, mm. in and out. But, you know, who? Eunice. <laughs> and, and now, like, so Scott, at the time, it was like, Courtney's will always like still be my number one priority kind of situation but now Courtney is like head over heels in love it, like head first into this new relationship she's with Travis so it's like Amelia probably doesn't have to worry about it that as much because Scott's probably a little butthurt about it and like is like well she's not gonna be my time like now I'm gonna put all of this into this relationship with someone else yeah I, I just think either way I don't know what these guys are doing sometimes. Like, maybe Scott and Amelia do have a, a great relationship. Maybe they do get along. Yeah. But it kind of reminds me, I was watching The Hills, and Brody was saying that, because in this season, he's, like, not drinking, but he's definitely drinking in real life. Yeah. Um, He was like, I want a girl who's, like, you know, to, not drinking, isn't party, whatever. And it's like, well, when you date all 20-something-year-olds, yeah. young 20-something-year-olds... Right. They're probably going to want to be out partying yeah. if they're not drinking. Like, yeah. if they're sober, maybe not. But if they are drinkers, they probably want to be out drinking. Right. So maybe somebody your own age, yeah. I don't know, or closer to that may work. Who knows? Yeah. Who am I to say? Who am I to tell anybody what to do there? But I don't know. It seems like it's working out for Scott and Amelia as of now. Is that a forever thing? Probably not. It's just Travis Barker and Courtney Kardashian. On the other hand, I want to like it. I do because I want to support Scott. But every time I see it, I'm just like, it just is cringe every time. Yeah, like every post, like I'm just like, ooh, yeah, right. (laughs) It. We know nothing about Amelia, so it's like you can't really. I always liked her on Beverly Hills. Yeah, I mean, (laughs) right. It's like that's all we've seen, and she seems like a very nice girl, beautiful girl, but no it's no travis and courtney oh wait another question that i feel like i thought when i was looking at her birthday post for scott what is with celebrities and in tributes to their significant other when it's like a photo like slide of a bunch of photos there's always a picture of holding hands not their faces, not their bodies. Like maybe they're in a car, maybe they're at dinner, maybe they're on the couch. But it's just of them holding hands to prove it's that just they like like but each other. I, it's, <laughs> it's just like it is. That's such a symbol a, of like. No, but it's such a famous person thing. Like I don't really see regular people doing that, but I see celebrities doing it all the time. I don't know. I think it's they just always maybe post pictures of a, them holding hands, aesthetically pleasing. You're like, I don't wow, know. It's artsy, pretty this, hands. I don't know. This reminds me. <sighs> My dad was popping off the other day because he, somebody in my family posted, it was like anniversary, whatever. And I think it was my aunt. And she posted happy anniversary to her husband. Yeah. And my dad gets on the phone with her and says to her, why do you got to do that fake ass bullshit where you, you post about happy anniversary? Why can't you just tell him to his face? And I was like, dad, why are you getting so mad about this? Yeah, he yeah. was like, I'm just so sick of everyone so fake on social media. I was like, whoa, you want to come That's on the podcast? From a different place. You want to come on the podcast and talk about it, bro? Yeah. You seem very passionate about this subject. God, don't ask him about happy birthday posts. I know. I was like, uh, what? I feel like I've seen you post about mom. Like, on yeah, birthday. yeah. Like, what is going yeah. on? I don't know. Some people choose to celebrate on social media. But <laughs> yeah, yeah it's just when there's tributes like that, everyone always has a strong opinion. But the I don't know. The hand holding was something that I was just like, what's going on? What's going on here? Why? Why is everyone posting just their hands to help? show that they're intimate? Yeah, I guess so. <laughs> I guess so. I feel like Travis and Courtney have done it. I, there was another somebody else. I, I think you could think of like any any celebrity that have pictures they post. Maybe it's just their way of like. It's also their way of putting it out there without um, an actual picture of their faces. But if they're posting happy birthday already, didn't yeah. Travis like, and yes, Courtney but I post think, like the tongue thing? Like no, no, no. Yes, but I'm saying early on. 
forget the example I just used. I'm saying early on, I think a lot of celebrities do that also on their Instagram stories where it's like, ooh, are they dating? Are they not dating? Yeah, they just post a hands. picture of their, of their hands or whose hand is that? Whose hand is that? <laughs> I like it as a confirmation. Yeah. Yeah, well, take, just keep that in mind now when you're looking at celebrities' posts about tributes, you know, for birthdays, anniversaries. There's always a hand-holding picture. I mentioned in the intro that I'm wearing some blue light glasses. They are from Nectar. They're amazing. Nectar not only has blue light glasses, but they have sunglasses. And Nectar has been around for nine years. They're headquartered in Charleston, South Carolina. They're all about that East Coast lifestyle, which we are 100% a part of. We have firmly decided we are east coast people Um, they make polarized glasses for real east coast folks living real lives you know they look great they're affordable starting at just fifty dollars um i have the i want to say that mine have like a cool mirrored lens my sunglasses i'm not wearing the sunglasses i'm wearing my blue light right now but they're called the anna ruby uh sunglasses i'm a big fan of the tortoise like i always normally get tortoise and then had like a cool like purpley blush mirrored lens really really stylish and cool I know, Rhea, that you love the ones you got, too. So we're super happy about them. And after nine years in the game, Nectar is introducing their first ever premium line of glasses starting at $85. So you get the premium look along with the highest quality, along with the highest quality acetate frames available without having to pay thousands. So these new frames, they're eco-friendly, lightweight, durable. You can wear them all over. Like I said, I got mine on right now. Wear them to work. I can switch on and put my sunglasses on when I'm walking out of the office. They also have a lifetime warranty. It's one of the best in the game. It literally covers it all. So Nectar offers all shoppers free shipping, a lifetime warranty, and they're giving our listeners 25% off. We love our Nectar glasses, so make sure to visit Nectarsunglasses.com slash C-I-T-O to get your own today. That's Nectarsunglasses.com slash C-I-T-O. We got our first look at the iCarly reboot. The trailer was released, and it's just kind of mixed feelings. I think that there are times when the reboot comes out where I'm like, yes, that looks bad, but I'm going to watch. Mm-hmm. Like, I watched every, and not saying it was bad because it wasn't, it was so good, <laughs> but I watched every episode of Fuller House. Loved Fuller House. <laughs> but it's like, that felt different because it was kind of more centered on new characters. And I don't really know how many new characters are going to be in the in, in iCarly, still centered around the same main characters. But it just, I don't know, it just didn't snag me as much as I kind of thought it would. Here's the thing. I don't think it's marketed to us. I, I don't think... I think... I know, but neither was Fuller House. <laughs> I, I understand that, but I think maybe Full ha- Fuller House yeah. was marketed a little bit more to an older crowd, even though it was very young. Yeah. Whereas I think... It's like kind of like Girl Meets World, too. I think that with iCarly, it's because so many young kids started watching iCarly because it was put on Netflix. Yeah. And they, they got... A new audience from that yeah so all the kids that watched iCarly now are like oh my god we're getting more iCarly yeah. and they're happy about that even though you know the characters aren't the Gibby's not in it Sam's not in it yeah. and obviously we're not going to be laughing as hard at, as, at these jokes because to be completely honest it wasn't even that funny to begin with but when we were kids we thought it was really funny some some jokes hold up and yeah. some do not yeah but for entertainment purposes if i was a kid i think i'd be all in on this i i i think i'd rather just keep rewatching the old iCarly I'm, I'm sure i'm gonna check this out just to see what happens with it and it's cool and i think it's a good idea and i think that a lot of people are gonna watch it but i don't think it's marketed to us i, I think that's why we're kind of like Eh. yeah and also because we it's a show that we knew and loved for so long and you, the the characters aren't the same and so it hits us it sparks a nerve it might also be because i never really loved iCarly also <laughs> really like yeah well, I, that would make sense yeah if you didn't I, love yeah. iCarly in the first place I, then what makes you think you're gonna yeah, like, like the reboot, the reboot. <laughs> i don't know um i i watched all of iCarly yeah when it was on tv always watched like when it was on always watch it but i just never it didn't have the same pull for me. Mm. Like, I just didn't really... 
I never like went back and put on iCarly episodes, mm. if that makes sense. Right? Some like, shit was incredibly stupid. Yeah. Yeah. Like there were some very funny moments and they've that have held up and I do think like Spencer has had some very funny moments on that show and same with Sam and like the two of them aren't mm. on the show anymore. <laughs> and uh I mean Spencer is yes, but Sam no. And I feel like like, I would always watch it for the new episodes to know what was going on. But I never, like, went back and rewatched it or turned it back on. Like, I, I haven't even put it back on since it's been on Netflix. And I really don't think I would enjoy it as as much as I didn't really enjoy it right. when I was younger I, anyway. The way that you're explaining, I don't think you would either. And yeah. I will tell you, and this is something I didn't want to admit, but I will. I, when it went back on Netflix, I watched a few episodes. And for some reason... And it's like other things in life that have scared me that are not actually scary. Like that That's So Raven episode with Paula Abdul at the end yep, that yep, really yep. scared me my whole life, but it's not actually scary. I was really, I got a weird, bad feeling about it and I felt scared. And then I slept over Brianna's house last week or the week before and it was really late and we were fucked up. And she was like, should we put on iCarly because we we're going through Netflix. Yeah. And I was like, I straight up, won't be able to go to sleep after if we put on iCarly. And she was like, what are you talking about? I was like, I don't, for some reason, Not it's fucking scaring it right me at yeah. night. I, yeah. I don't know why. I don't know if it's if it's the Michael Jackson comparison that people yeah. make about Miranda Cosgrove, which is rude, but at the same time, you know, gets in your brain. And is I was scared of Michael Jackson. Been no, I think it's always her. been that way. And I was very scared of Michael Jackson growing up. So I don't know if that has something to do with it. Something's coming back in my brain. Or if it's because... I've heard Jeanette McCurdy talk about how much she really did not enjoy being on that show. Yeah. And just acting in general. So then when I watch, I feel guilty for like enjoying it so much and I feel worried and scared yeah. for them. I don't know. It's like I this overwhelming feeling comes over me when I put it on and I got like freaked out by it. Yeah, and you know what I didn't realize? And you now this says a lot to me and how I just like forget my age and where I was in my life. <laughs> Because I just always watch those kinds of shows. But iCarly was on TV, like, all throughout me being in high school. So I feel like I kind of just was a little on the older side. Probably. What, what year did it come out? 2007. End of 2000. It aired from September 2007 to November 2012. So okay. I had one year in eighth grade. So like it start I feel like it started and I was like middle school and like that I liked it at the beginning and then I think mm. I kind of just like maybe aged out of it a little bit. Yeah, that that would make sense. Yeah. I think when I for you started it was like 5th grade. Like yeah. I feel like that was the perfect It was prime perfect time. age. Um but yeah, when it ended it was like okay, this is ending. I'm not even going to I'm not yeah, watching yeah. it anymore anyway, yeah. but yeah, I don't I it just seems like you weren't the biggest iCarly fan and I think that's okay. And I yeah. think I think I never really dissected that though, and now I yeah, feel like I have, and that's probably why. Yeah, you're being honest about it. And that's when great. did um, Hannah Montana's last episodes air? I think I was in eighth grade. Um, I want to say 2011, maybe. Yeah, 2011. 2011. Okay. Hannah, Hannah Montana never lost me. No. And I same mean, with Wizards of Waverly. Well, obviously, you had to see how Hannah Montana. You know. I know. What I'm saying like I like. <laughs> Hannah Montana had me locked in. Wizards of Waverly Place had me locked See, in. See, Wizards well, was the same thing for like iCarly. I didn't like Wizards of Waverly Place, but no, I liked, I liked iCarly. Wizards. I actually liked Wizards of Waverly Place a lot because I felt like the humor was a little more adult in yeah. Wizards. And it, it like Alex's personality, Sel yeah. Selena Gomez's role was... I think actually very funny. Whereas I think iCarly was genuinely fucking stupid. Like, there were some very, really stupid um, things. Random dancing. Yeah. Like there were just some really stupid things on very, iCarly. Very like slap. Yeah. Hat, slap like slapstick humor. Yeah. Like it's like, ah, uh, people falling but over. But that was like the like, same thing with Drake and Josh too. I would say. But like the same yeah, type but of. But Drake and Josh just delivered it oh, so yeah, much no. better. It's just when those shows were ahead of it. it it's kind of yeah. like. I, Carly and Victorious had similar vibes. Yeah. But I think I liked the premise of Victorious better than I, Car maybe we didn't like I, Carly. I don't know. <laughs> I mean, I think I, we were just more <laughs> Disney people than Nickelodeon. I think we were more, I would definitely say I was more Disney Channel person, yeah. but I SpongeBob loved, and Drake and Josh. I loved ones Zoe ones. 101. Oh, true. And like so much. Yeah. Like, I really like thought I was Zoe and 
I liked Drake and Josh a lot. I'm trying to think of the other shows on Nickelodeon that I really liked. I think a lot of cartoons too. Was Rocket yeah. Power on Yeah, Nickelodeon? like a lot of a lot of the cartoon early cartoons Rugrats yeah. was yeah, my yeah, favorite yeah. show oh, growing yeah. up. Um but at the time when they're going against Sweet Life is Zack Cody, yeah. Adam Montana, Wizards, That's So Raven, like there's no Jimmy competition Neutron. there. Love oh, Jimmy, Jimmy Neutron. Neutron. Jimmy that Neutron. Was a great show. Jimmy yeah. Neutron. Really. Very odd parents. Yeah. 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 Odd. Hey yeah. Arnold. Yeah. Great. Great, great cartoons. cartoons. Yeah. The lo- yeah. And also great shows, but they. It Just was not as emotionally invested. A little more feet oriented. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, what? there's a reason for that. I know. <laughs> Big announcement for the chicks in the office. We are getting into the lax game. Yes, we're, we are. We're diving head first. Roll Woods, we picked our team. We're yep. going with the Redwoods. We like everything about them. And this weekend, tonight... I like the name because it reminds me of Backwoods. Yep. Very fair. Very nice. I like that a lot. <laughs> they got a, bit, you know, a nice bear on their yeah. uh, <laughs> bear on their logo. Um, tonight, Friday night, the games are kicking off. The season's kicking off June 4th. That's today, 7 p.m. on Peacock. Our team, the Redwoods, are leading the charge. Opening game, playing against the Cannons. That they're the new team. Now I know a lot about lacrosse. People don't know this because Joe loves lacrosse. He played lacrosse in college. Um, so Boston Cannons came from the MLL. Now they are into the PLL. So it's a totally new team. Uh, Chris Hogan is on that team. So everybody's freaking out about that. And then for the rest of the weekend, it's just awesome. Like you can really tune into all the games. The way they do it is they travel to different cities every weekend um and you can go watch multiple games in each city so all summer long june through september the pll will be traveling to a city near you that includes boston atlanta baltimore long island minneapolis salt lake city and more you can go to ticketmaster to pick up tickets or make sure to tune into nbc sports or peacock to catch the action the sport of the future is here there's some great ones and also they really have, like, if you don't care about lacrosse at all, it's a great way to start and learn about it. It's all the best players in the world. And they have, like, it's just very creative and cool. I love all their logos. All their merch is great. Like, if you just like cool sports merch, their water dog stuff is awesome. Um, I, you know, Whip Snakes are back-to-back champions. Will they win for a third season in a row? Who knows? Tune in this summer to find out. And also, you know, can, you can follow uh, the PLL at premier lacrosse on twitter and at pll on instagram so tune in we will be go redwoods go redwoods it has been up down and all around for francesca and harry from too hot to handle you know i already like i don't know what it is about other francescas but i'm just like what's good with you you know Oh, you don't fuck with other friends. No, I do. Oh, oh. No, I do, but I think... You said what's good with you. No, I I 100% do, but, like, when there are ones that are, like, getting in trouble, not Mm. not, not, not necessarily that this Francesca's getting in trouble, but, like, in the drama, I'm like, damn, what's going on with you, Francesca? Talk to me. From Francesca to Francesca. That's personal. Let's hear it. Yeah. I also don't... We don't ever talk about... There's not a lot of, like, celebrity Francescas. No, there isn't. There's Francesca and Harry from Too Hot to Handle. Yeah. I mean, we're just talking names at this. There's no, not I know, many but Maria's. <laughs> yes, there is not. But I'm saying it's just a weird thing. Yeah. Like, it doesn't bother you for, no. for some reason. Like, I I'm feel just like, like overall, Francesca is a very popular name, though, just like in terms of the world. You think so? Yes. I don't think it is. I don't I think, think it is. so. Mm, I didn't meet one Francesca. Maria and Francesca, up. I feel like, are very popular names. Definitely Maria. They're. It's popular, but I've I don't know other Marias. Yeah. When I was born, like Noah was not popular, but now it's like one of the most popular names. I think name well, kids. maybe it's changed, but like like I just said, I didn't grow up with I didn't know a single franchise. I don't think you would put Maria and Francesca Until on a list of like popular girl names though. There are a lot of people named that, but if you're doing a, a right. straight up list of popular yeah. girl names, I don't think a lot those of two are kids these high. days are being named Maria. <laughs> yeah, who would but fucking I think, name oh, I think it is Maria. a very popular name. <laughs> yeah. And I just feel yeah. like Francesca. I feel like those are just staple names. Like I don't know. I maybe because you know us. Francesca yeah. Maria. How many Francescas do you know? None. How many Marias <laughs> do you know? 
None. Yeah, well, okay. okay. So moving on. Anyways, anyways, anyway, to Harry to and Francesca. <laughs> Francesca and Harry have, you know, last summer it was crazy. Their time on the show was wild. They seemed so hot and heavy after the show. And then there was a breakup and they've blown up in their own ways. Francesca's mm-hmm. all over social media and she's dated other people and dated other women and been out on these dates. And Harry has like t- t- kind of like totally thrust himself into the YouTube world, like, you know, BFFs with Tana and all that stuff. And just like, they've had these separate pads and the way they always talked about it, it kind of seemed like their relationship did not end well. It was just like very bad. And over the last month or so, it looked like they reconnected and were maybe going to get back together. And no, it seems like it blew, it blew up again. And I don't think these two people are meant to be together. <laughs> I don't think they're meant to be together either. I think that they probably have like a lusting for each other. They're both hot, right? People, they're both so. hot. They probably have good sex, yeah, and so exactly. they're probably like, "Oh, we want to have sex with each literally other." Literally, the but whole premise of the show they were right. on. <laughs> exactly, they just wanted to fuck. <laughs> they're the literally whole time. too hot to handle, yeah, right? Like they just wanted to fuck each other, and so I think that's probably what's happening. Where, I mean, Francesca was in a relationship at, uh, up until two weeks ago. She was dating another woman, and it seemed like they were happy, and then that kind of ended, and then Harry's name got dra- dragged back into it, and it seems like Francesca and Tanner really don't get along. And Francesca didn't really like that Harry was still hanging around Tana. Um, And then Tana was posting TikToks about Harry and Francesca and Francesca not being happy that Harry's hanging out with Tana. And here's the thing. If at the end of the day, Harry, if you want to be friends with Tana, then be friends with Tana. Yeah. It's not going to work out with Francesca then. And you need to get that through your head. You gotta if those two if are you, not gonna get no, along. they're not. And if you want to keep your friendship with Tana, which I understand, you don't want to just drop your friends, right? Date somebody who respects your friendship and understands your friendship with Tana, yeah. and then you'll be good to go. And for Francesca, I feel like Francesca, oh, why are we hanging on to Harry? Let's yeah. let's move past this. There I are agree. plenty of fish in the sea. She says she wants to be in a relationship, but she just was in a relationship. She wanted to be in a relationship with Harry, I guess. It, it's not going to work out for the two of them. They're not yeah. They're not forever. They're yeah. not. And I think that both of them just need to live single life as the two hot people that they are right now and enjoy this fame that they're getting and just yeah. go wild. Like, he, like, Harry shouldn't have to feel restricted on who he's being friends with, right? If he's friends with Tana then he's friends with Tana and the right person is going to be okay with that absolutely I feel like I'm giving like relationship to advice to Harry he's not even sitting here no Harry if you see this I'm like yeah yeah yeah, uh it's like the right right girl for him is not going to care about his friendships the TikToks he makes or or whatever if that's what he wants to continue to do if if, he's not going to put an end to it in the relationship yes and there was also a TikTok made saying that you know his birthday and they are going to need two tables Tana and Francesca like kid can't be near each other don't get along so they're it's i just don't feel like their relationship is strong enough and harry never really wanted you know harry's not going to give up that tana side of his life for francesca Mm -hmm. my question is why can't francesca and tana get along What's I'm not going sure. on there? They okay. Maybe they've said some shit about. I was going to say. Other. I'm pretty sure they've said some not not so nice things. Okay. I, maybe is Jake involved somehow? Possibly. I think Francesca may have uh, hooked up with. I think was that said on BFFs? That I don't know. Harry said that one night Francesca yeah went and hooked up with Jake and then he hooked up with Julia Rose. Yeah. I think that's yep. what happened. I've, I think that was said. But yeah. either way, I guess it's easier said than done, right? But why can't they just like if if why can't we if Tana be friends? doesn't why want we yeah be if Tana friends? doesn't want to date Harry yeah and she's not interested in him in a romantic way and Francesca is then what's what are we fighting about mm-hmm. it's not like two girls that are fighting about a guy because they're both romantically invested in him mm-hmm. it's a friendship versus a relationship so can't they put the, their differences aside Fran. It doesn't seem like it because I also think that Francesca, I, besides the friendship stuff, I think that Francesca like really wants a relationship and I don't think Harry d- does. So that's where they're going to hit a roadblock every single time. She said this week, I'm 27 now. She's also older than him. And I think mm-hmm. that like maybe there might be a maturity situation there. 
Um, she said, I'm 27 now and I can see through bullshit really easily. And I wasn't going to put myself back in a situation where I was going to be heartbroken again. I spent a week crying over it, but now I'm done. I'm ready to completely close that chapter of my life and move on and not get hurt anymore. She's the most single single she's ever been in her entire life. And she says, I don't want to be single. I like being in a relationship and I feel like I'm at the stage in my life where I want a relationship and I want to settle down soon. So it's hard to find someone to date. So that makes sense. For Jessica jumps into this thinking like her and Harry are going to get back together and maybe like things will accelerate quickly. And I highly doubt Harry is ready to be in that place in his life. I don't think so either. And you know what? That's fine. I just, I I enjoy following the both, both of them, seeing yeah. where this goes. But I think, I don't think it's going yeah. anywhere. Oh, last thing about the name thing. This just popped in my head. Noah, this is how I always judged it too. And I hated it as a kid. Going into any kind of gift shop you're on vacation you you go into a gift shop and they got the spiral things of yeah. the of your names on the license plates or the bracelets never, never? francesca francesca's no what never no never really mary i, I know that, that also, that's a thing like yeah i know that maria is a popular name yeah i just feel like if you were looking at a list of popular girl names they wouldn't be at the top i don't think no you think maybe in italy <laughs> maybe yeah <laughs> italy or, or spain yeah yeah um yeah not yeah it's just i was just saying because i don't didn't that drive you nuts like every time i would go in and like my friends would all be able to buy one mm -hmm. and i would just be like they don't have my name and i'd be so sad that is sad Do you i make know. your own sometimes um i got there was one and i and i hate at the time i hated fran i still don't really love fran but i i like, they would have Fran. I'd be like, that's not my name. <laughs> oh, shit. Well, you know how my mom acts. Yeah, I yeah. A acts when people call me. Like, she doesn't like Fran. She doesn't She referred it. to as Francesca, and I was like, oh, whoa. Like, yeah, well, weird that's... Yeah. The whole fam does. They, so they, yeah. she, they all call you they Francesca? They all call her Francesca. It comes and goes. Sometimes Fran. JB, my brother calls me Fran now more just because everybody else, everybody else does. But, like, Joe calls me Francesca. He doesn't call me Fran. Joe calls me Maria. Yeah. I think Joe doesn't realize that like my nickname has been Rhea like yeah, 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 yeah. my what whole life. But he's like a he he's I like a full it. name guy. Yeah. He does that to everyone. Too. Yeah. My brother's name is Alex and or uh, technically Alexander, but like no one's ever called him that's Alex. Yeah. Yeah. Alexander just seems a bit too serious. Extremely. Yeah, but so is Francesca. That's kind of serious. It's just it was long. it was just long. That's all. Yeah, it's it's <laughs> three syllables is a lot. Three syllables is a lot, which is why I have come to accept Fran. Even though when I was growing up, I really didn't like it. Middle school, I tried to make. I told you this. Middle school, I tried to make Cheska happen. That didn't last Cheska. long. Cheska. Yeah. I love when Francesca's trying to go Cheska. My cousin did that too. I really tried to go Cheska. I had a Fresca. bracelet. I I actually made myself a bracelet. That I remember we went on a trip in middle school. Me and. Where were we going? I don't know where we were, but we were literally in like some gift shop and you could get the leather bracelets engraved with your name. And so literally me trying to push Cheska so hard, I got Cheska and wore it like every day to school. And everyone was like, and nobody Who are you? Cheska? You're just like holding your arm no, up to everyone. Yeah, like, I was like, no, 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 no. Some people did. It caught on a little, but never, not enough. Not to, fully. No. Because if it did catch on fully, you'd be Cheska. To exactly. Hear. If it caught on <laughs> enough, I would have been able to go into high school, into like a new school, being like, like hi, I'm my Cheska. name is Cheska. Yeah. And, That's a weird. Um, that would be weird. Hey, Cheska. Yeah. And <laughs> and I did I clearly did not do that. Yeah. <laughs> some people would think, are you saying Jessica? Yeah. It's confusing. Chessy. Che Oh, yeah. yeah. That is that is confusing. Yeah. It's, yeah, it's tough out there. <laughs> <laughs> we have an awesome interview slash conversation with Becca Tilly and Tanya Rad from Scrubbing In with Becca and Tanya. They are so awesome. We had such a good time. But it's Thursday, and we're heading into a warm weather weekend. So what I'm doing as soon as I get home is opening up a Coors Seltzer. And right now, summer is finally here. Like I said, the warm weather is coming, and Coors Seltzer came up with a brand new limited edition orange cream pop. It's very reminiscent of sitting on the beach on a hot summer day, sitting by the pool, having a nice popsicle. But this time, you're getting alcohol in the mix. It's a Coors Seltzer orange cream pop hard seltzer. It's nostalgic. It gives you that feeling like you're having a popsicle on the beach by the pool, but you're also drinking, having a good time. And it's 4.5% 
alcohol and only 90 calories per 12 ounce and comes in a 12 pack every 12 pack purchase refreshes the rivers with 500 gallons of water as well so not only are you drinking and having a good time you're also helping out the rivers so you can try it today you can get Coors Light and Coors Seltzer delivered straight to your door with Drizzly or Instacart or go to CoorsSeltzer.com slash chicks to see where you can purchase Rocky Mountain refreshment now in a hard seltzer brewed in Fort Worth Texas celebrate responsibly Coors Brewing Company Fort Worth Texas for every 12 pack sold through December 31st 2021 Coors will purchase services from change the course to restore 500 gallons of fresh river water max 5 billion gallons through 2021 details are at CoorsAlter.com so if you want to shop CoorsAlter.com slash chicks check out the uh, orange cream pop while you're at it all right, everyone, we are here with two very special guests. We got Becca Tilly and Tanya Rad in the studio with us. Not actually, but they are our first guests in the new studio via Zoom. We've been wanting to have you ladies on the show for a long time yeah. now. So welcome. Yeah, we're so excited. I I mean, the first guest in the new studio, virtual guest. Wow. I know. And the studio looks really good, by the way. Congratulations. It looks like very official, legit. Thank you guys. We really, it's been a long time. We've been working on this for months and it's just like, it's been done for so long. We've been waiting to post every week. It'd be like, we think the new studio is coming next week, pushing it off, pushing it off. But like Rhea said, we're so excited um, that you guys are here. It has been a long time coming. I really wanted to have you guys in person, which is why I was like, oh, you know, we're going to LA. Like maybe we could find a time, but I'm happy oh, we yeah, have you wait, on when Zoom. when are you coming to LA? We, no, were, just we, we were just there. We were there two we're, weeks ago. Yeah. And um. so that was when, <laughs> yeah, like I had initially said to our talent booker, I was like, oh my God, reach out to Becca and Tanya. Maybe we can do something in LA. Didn't work out. We're here now though, which is great. And then when we'll figure, we'll figure out a time to do it in person at some point. Well, yeah. you know, I, right before COVID, I had a conversation with Kelty from Lady Gang and she was like, we should do like a female podcast tour and it'd be like us scrub scrubbing in uh chicks in the office and i was like let's do it be so fun and then you know the whole world shut down so we didn't get past that conversation yeah that but i was really like i idea, haven't e we haven't even gotten to be on each other's podcasts yet so i felt like that needed this needed to happen before our worldwide tour begins i i also love that because we all cover so much ground we could like be in arenas <laughs> <laughs> yeah <laughs> you know? no, totally we would like, be we'd have to have just, big like, venues not to tune yeah, our horns, like but. I think it's, it's like a true testament of like we're stronger together. Like we could like really we could go to what's the new stadium they built in LA? The one that holds like a hundred thousand. Oh, people? the SoFi. The SoFi Stadium. The so SoFi. Fi. Yeah, the SoFi. Oh, so fi. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> I Someone mean, told me Sophie, so I've been saying Sophie all this time, and it's Sophie, so that's that's, that's so unfortunate. <laughs> you know, I was like the so the you Sophie know? Short Stadium. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> No, honestly, though, that's a great idea. We got to keep that one in our back pocket yeah. for when things are like, you know, when we can get into those arenas. But you guys <laughs> crack me up. I love following both of you on social media, like, thoroughly. Yeah. I, like, there's a lot of people, you know, there's people you follow, and you kind of just, like, skip through their stories. Like, you guys, I'm really in tune with. I pay attention to each of you. <laughs> and it's because you guys are for so... For different things. For different things. Yeah. Like, you, like, I just feel like... Becca, I relate to you. You know, you you're just like I'm gonna eat McDonald's. I'm gonna do whatever <laughs> I want. And Tanya is just like positivity twenty four seven, which is not really my thing. But I'm like, you know what? Maybe I gotta step outside and look at the butterflies. Like <laughs> just the way that you present things. But I love that you guys have this dynamic, and yeah. you guys are so close. But you guys really are so different. Could not be more different in everything. Truly. In every sense of the word. So I do have to say, though, thanks for saying that, because I love following both of you as well. Like, I genuinely I started following y'all like way after we met at uh, the PCAs. And I laugh a lot at because I love to take like, you know, an edible and then I like just start eating. And I feel like, you know, y'all have a full podcast about getting high. So yeah, we're like on the same page about that. <laughs> how, how do you guys wait? Yes. Do I need to eat an edible? Do I need to eat an edible? Do I need to try one? You've never had one? No. What? Yes, of course. 
You're in you're in California. Even, even friends like even I've <laughs> even I've had like one. I don't I don't do it often. I'm I Rhea does the because we got a high podcast with two other girls here at Barstool. Um and I always am like, you know, that's I not not up my alley. I won't shame But every you, once though, in a while my personal opinion is I would rather smoke weed than take an edible. Like sometimes edibles can just really throw you for a loop. You kind of don't know what you're getting okay, sometimes. Okay, see that, that, that is the reason okay. why I can't. But it's no, fun no, in the end. You'll, you'll, no, you'll Tanya always know. But that's like, Tanya, Rhea's you'll... talking about it. Like if you take a pe- bite of a brownie, if that, like, you have like you a 75 home, milligram yes, edible, no. you're going to feel no. fucked up. But if you have a little, <laughs> pop a little five, you'll be... Yeah. More than okay. They have it in the store. You, you live in California. They have it made perfectly for you where you know exactly how much is in the little the little gummy bear, or yeah. the sour patch watermelon Tanya. that you get. <laughs> Tanya, I'm I bet you would have one. Take an edible because- <laughs> yeah, I'm back on the no train. <laughs> no, oh, I wish I didn't no, scare I'm you into that. I'm back on the no. Have a five milligram no, I appreciate edible. It. Do, Tanya, do you eat McDonald's? This is a question, I my burning no. question. Yeah, what is up with that? People Here's the thing. I'm it. not against it. Like I, ha- I, you know, I've had a Taco Bell. Oh. What did I have recently? I had a Crunchwrap Supreme. Uh, like a couple months ago. <laughs> Sorry, um, I had Taco Bell for like the first time ever. I'm not like against any of that, but like for me, I can't. Like I, I physically feel it if I'm not eating. Like if I'm not drinking a lot of water and I'm not eating properly, my body doesn't function properly, and like I just don't. I can't. I can't. It's almost like if I if I eat something bad, it slows me down, and I'm like, yeah. ain't nobody got time for that. You know what's funny you though? You look fully naked right now. <laughs> <laughs> Do I <laughs> sit back? Sit back. <laughs> <laughs> she does. She looks like a mermaid. You know, like I, the like Becca. I the hair just literally was moves. about to say the same thing. I was like, she looks like straight up Ariel. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So can I tell you what happened? I um, I spent the night last night at my boyfriend's house, and I packed a different. I packed a change of clothes from the Billboard Music Awards so that I could like go to dinner after. So I brought like jeans <laughs> and a t-shirt and my pajamas to sleep at his house. But I didn't realize that I had work the next morning. Monday morning is the morning show, and so I had to, like literally like set my alarm, fly out of bed, and I was like, I don't have clothes, and so I'm literally wearing my. This is my pajama top. Yeah, <laughs> super cute though. Morning. Very cute. <laughs> Cheap. Uh, very cheap. cheap. That is that is jeans. very very funny. Um. Oh yeah. There oh, you look. You got that's jeans a great on. Outfit. You look very cute. You yeah. Look very that's cute. a very cute outfit. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. I feel like I look put together, but I'm not. <laughs> <laughs> well, I was gonna say that it's funny because I think for like the three of us, it's like we never have even given our bodies the chance <laughs> to fully. <laughs> know what it felt like if we ate health you know if we were telling you like know what eating healthy feels like yeah we don't know how to be her right like (laughs) i'm i'm thinking like if i started to to do what you do like i'd be like wow i feel amazing like i'm definitely not gonna go back to fast food i've just yeah it's i guess you know what it could be like eating an edible like you feel that high and you're like i don't want to go back to not that you know so for me it's just the reverse where it's like I feel high when I'm. <laughs> so you don't. Sorry. You don't feel high. You you get like you feel excited and happy. But yeah. You don't feel don't high don't don't hit us with like I feel high, high when I come back from a run. We'll yeah. we'll have to yeah, walk, out the, the walk out the door. No, I'll walk out the door. I'll shut the zoom. No, that's true. <laughs> yeah. There is there is a high that comes from working out. That's like actually scientifically proven, and that is like a fact. No, absolutely. So wait, I want to back up a little bit because um, just for some background for everyone listening, you guys do the Scrubbing In podcast. It's fantastic. And we met at the People's Choice Awards a few years back. But I want everyone to know because, you know, you guys are two-time People's Choice Awards winners. And I would like everyone to know, like, how you guys even started your show. Because I think we were, were joking about how you guys are opposite. So it's like, how did you guys even become friends? Um, so we became, we were actually friends. Um, we actually shared a wall in our, when I moved to LA from San Diego, we shared a wall, like lived right next door to each other in the same apartment complex. And like Tanya would get mad at me if I had my door locked, like she would just barge in. And if it wasn't unlocked, she would text me or like, I'd let her in. She'd go, why was your door locked? And I'm like, because I was sleeping last night and I locked my door like a normal person. Like she was basically the cast of friends. She just like felt entitled to being in my apartment. 
So we did that. And then when I started the podcast, I, it was just me. And, um, I started it scrubbing in with Becca Tilly and it was kind of me just interviewing different guests of like TV shows that I loved. And that was kind of the gist of it was like me talking about pop culture things. But I quickly realized that it was hard to be just like a one person show interviewing other people because that wasn't really my, like, I don't really consider myself like a Ryan Seacrest interviewee type. So, um, we had Tanya on because my sister, I have two younger sisters and they're really funny and sarcastic and I had them come on. And as soon as they got in front of the microphone, they just like shut down. <laughs> and so we were like, we have to find, we got to like make up some of the time of that podcast we did. And we recorded the iHeart studio and Tanya had just finished the morning show. And so I was like, Hey, will you come do the podcast with me? And as soon as it started, I looked at our producer and I was like, this is this is it and so after that it was like it just became scrubbing in with Becca Tilly and Donya Rowe amazing and I do have to say that like at that time it's really interesting I don't know how many years it's been was it has we been doing it for like three years four years now Mm -hmm. at this point four it'll be four I think this and this was at a point in my career where like I was very I'm not trying to say I'm at a, like this crazy point in my career now, but like I was very are, much considered like tertiary and, you know, yeah, just like not really like, I don't know. I just, a lot of people weren't taking me seriously. And when Becca brought me on, like Becca had to fight to get my name on the podcast because like, it was like, I, it just, I, it wasn't, you know, like my name wasn't big enough or cool mm. enough or like whatever. And it just goes to show you like what kind of a person Becca is because she, I mean, if she had an ego in any way, she would have been like, no, this is my podcast. She's like my side piece, whatever. But she was like, no, like it's 50, 50, like it's, it's both of us. And like, I want your name on this podcast. And she like went to bat for me. And I thought that was like so special because I don't know, you don't, it's not common in this industry, you know? And so everything, and she didn't just like put her foot down. Like she really stepped up and like made it happen. And it wouldn't have happened if she wouldn't have like gone to bat for me. So that was like really special in the beginning. And I, and I, I tell her, I've told her thank you many times, but uh, it's, it's something that is really important, especially as like women in the industry that we kind of help each other and push each other and lift each other. That is really sweet. Honestly, yeah. <laughs> that is a really nice story. How did, um, <laughs> How did you feel, Tanya, when Becca asked you to do the show originally? Were you, like, all in at first? Or were you like, oh, it's a podcast? Like, what were your thoughts about it? No. I I mean, literally, when I went into filling for her sister that day, it was so fun, you know? And it's such a different dynamic. And it's such a different... The thing that's interesting and I find so cool about every show that, like, I've ever been a part of is, like, everything is so different. And you get... Especially with podcasts, I feel you get to really explore your personalities in a different way. And I also love that it's like, we actually are really doing life together and then we get to do life together and share it with a community of people. So it's like actually really beautiful because I feel like we created a community that really feels like a sisterhood Mm -hmm. and it's like genuine, you know, because it's like our friendship is and our relationship is genuine. So I don't know. It's been, it's been really special. Yeah, it is really cool. And I think from like our standpoint of, to uh women doing this also it's cool because you guys both do your own things too or it's like wow becca just did this or tanya just did this like we could be we could do that you know it's it's very inspiring because it's like tanya's on the red carpet we let's get on the red carpet becca's creating (laughs) her own clothing line with macy's like let's create our own clothing line you guys do such cool things that i think sometimes women in in our business like don't even think that like they could do like i know tanya you always talk about your imposter syndrome and all the things like that where it's like should I be doing that stuff can I do that stuff but I love that you guys are always yeah. doing it because I'm like well Becca's doing it Tanya's doing it we can we can do it <laughs> yeah and I think well uh, by the way Drake has imposter syndrome too which like shook me to my core when he said that I was like wow I mean Drake like he's just yeah. like a mega 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 star and the fact that he has imposter syndrome is like beyond me um, but I think you're so right. I think that it's, it's a really special time too for women because I feel like we can do so much and there is no limit. And it's interesting you bring up the people's choice words because that's how I found out about your, you, yeah. this, your podcast was because we obviously we were all nominated against each other. Yep. <laughs> and 
I remember after we won, our scrubbers were like in our Facebook group and they were like, chicks in the office are ragging on you guys. <laughs> and so I was like, who are they? What is going Can on? Can I so just I like, say, I was going to bring this up and I was going to talk about that. And they were like, no, like, don't bring that up. And now I'm so happy you brought that up because I wanted to clear that up because I remember all that happening. And obviously it's like we were joking around about losing and we had no business even being there in the first place. Like, we don't, like, you know what I mean? Nobody knew our names on the red carpet. Like the whole thing, we were making a joke out of it. And your listeners who are so dedicated, by the way, I love that about them. They were not happy with me. And I was like, oh no. And I remember I DM'd you both apologizing, being like, I hope you guys know that I was joking. Like you guys are so deserving and like all this and neither of you answered me and that's okay. <laughs> but I I apologized like the next day because your listeners like were so upset. <laughs> Wait, I never saw it. Guys. Wait, no, I'm so it's funny because so I, I see all this like scuttle going on. I listened and like I could obviously tell that you guys were like joking around. Like yeah. I kn- I knew and like the same with Beck and I, like we the fact that we were even nominated, we were like, is this is somebody punking us? Like I think Right. And it's and I think it's because we didn't have as much of a of a relationship because we went I also listened to the Lady Gang's episode after they lost too. And like they were making the same jokes as us and I was like <laughs> Well, I, I guess maybe just because they know each other yeah, better that like, it's like, not. Oh, of course, <laughs> I can't I'm, make a joke. I'm like, because I'm listening to, to um, I'm listening to Lady Gang Becca be like, yeah, I mean, I'll have, like, we're just a bunch of fucking losers. Like, you know, <laughs> I'm like, oh, my God, like, this is we wanted to sound like that. And it, why didn't it come off? Like I, I felt so sad after because I was like, wait, I really like them. And the, but I, you know, I continued to follow you guys. And yeah. obviously I knew I knew we would end up friends on the other side of it. But I was definitely I definitely felt bad for a little bit. It was so such I'm a, glad it's out there. Yeah, And it was such a cool table <laughs> to be a part of. Hash that out. Yeah. <laughs> like now looking no, back. I am too, because I know Fran, like we've messaged before. Yeah, like, yeah. We message and we've like, we, we talk and like, I mean, I, it's not even like a, a thing. Yeah. But it was funny because our scrubbers did. They got like so like they, they were invested. You yeah. know what I mean? And so it was just so funny because I was like, what's going on but i think after that i obviously like i love both of you and i love your podcast and i do i really think that like we can all champion each other Mm -hmm. and like and i think it's even more important especially as like female podcasters to do those things because you know like even like i feel like you you know brought the lady gang they had their you know they have their own collective uh clothing line and they're doing a book Mm -hmm. and they're all doing their own individual things as well. And it's just so cool because it's like she can go off, they can go off and do their own thing. Our thing is so different and unique and we all bring something so different to the table that it's not necessarily like we're not competing. We're just mm-hmm. in this yeah. whole thing. And it's like men don't think about that at all. Men just, they just grab all their other men and they're like, let's all go, blah, 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 blah. And it's like, well, I don't know why, I don't know how, I think for so long, Pink actually was talking about this, how like, when she was starting out in the industry, women were so not it, this. The, it was just so different, you know. Mm-hmm. And it's 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 cool that it's changing. Yeah, absolutely. We love you know when other women podcasters come on. You guys, I mean, I'm super close with the girls from Comments by Celebs, and we've had them on yeah. our show, and vice versa. And people are always like, "Oh, like how are you guys friends? And you guys talk about the same stuff? Like, is it like?" competition it doesn't feel like a competition at all it feels like oh we all have each other to fall back on if we want to talk to somebody about something that like you'll understand because we're all working in the same industry it just makes it feel so much better and more mm-hmm. comfortable and like we all have something so unique and different yeah you know like we're all different individuals and so it's 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 like just because we are women doing the same thing we have totally different takes on the world you yeah know? yeah absolutely well, there's like different personality you know personality types that are similar and like in, in between the four of us i feel like fran and tanya <laughs> then ria and me are more like you know similar sure. to style. yeah and i was thinking before before podcast, i'm such a tanya we i'm were, such a tanya what? every time i said i'm such a tanya <laughs> every time i always yeah. joke it's just like a very funny dynamic dynamic where I, there's so many times that i say something so cheesy and ria's like 
really did that just come out of your mouth <laughs> well uh, me and becca had that moment before when you like you were talking about the jonas brothers and yeah. then tanya was like it's like you know like families around and becca just, community of people goes, at their she concerts just, she rolls her eyes and i'm like i kind of feel the same way like i i was thinking about that before it started uh, like on my ride into work i was like who's the who's the becca and who's the tanya oh, like, it's, oh it's pretty clear so clear <laughs> yeah, how do you guys decide like when you uh, when you're talking to your listeners i know you guys put it up on your instagram stories all the time I'm like, are you a Becca or are you a, are you a Tanya? What are the main points for each that decides who's who? I mean, it's like eating habits. Like the other night, I, I posted a story. We went to the premiere of uh, Pink's documentary and Tanya, it was me, Tanya and her boyfriend. And they brought food and then they had like little, the venue, they were handing out like little picnic boxes and it had fried chicken and you know and then it had like a huge cookie and i was like tanya or does, does anyone want a piece of this huge cookie that i have and she goes oh no we brought berries <laughs> and I, I was like okay see now that's where tanya loses me because i eat like you guys do <laughs> yeah that <laughs> but added, so loses me there like you ra- brought berries oh, no. <laughs> ratitude ratitude wise modern woman that's where tanya got that's where tanya gets me <laughs> But that's actually yeah, like, you don't have it. Like, yeah, sometimes I feel like I can truly convince myself that like I can do something, even though it's like not like something that just seems so uh, like crazy. I'm like, no, I can. I can almost like will myself to do anything, which I think is or, or like I don't know what the word is, hopeless or hopeful. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I love. No, I love it. And wait, so I want to ask you guys about. Um, I want to ask you guys about Grey's Anatomy, obviously, because I still you know every week i'm tuning in i'm watching and i know you guys are always posting on your stories of you watching and every week i'm like god i really wish i just like had a group chat with tony and becca because nobody else I, like not my friends i'll stop watching i'm like watching i'm like i don't have anybody to talk to about this i'm always replying to your stories being like that was so crazy <laughs> it's Wait, just, we should start a group chat though because like it is it's fewer and fewer around us. I know. Well, I was going to ask you guys, do you think that this is maybe the last season? I feel like everybody's kind of getting a send off. You mean the, no, they, they just signed for a new season. They did another season. Yeah. Oh man. <laughs> They're gonna have to bring in new, more people. Yeah. Cause I feel like, I, I feel, feel like, like the cast are dropping like flies. We're still watching. We're literally all like, Oh yeah. Another season. Like no one's even like so excited anymore. We're just like, okay. Yeah. I was going to say, are you guys still as into it or like, slow I'm responses? As into it in the sense that I, you know, watch it weekly. Like I don't wait or anything. Like I'm yeah. pretty consistent watching it, but I used to sit and watch it live on Thursday nights and I, I'm not, I'm not there anymore. But, but, it, but it's I'm like, you can't not loyal. watch. Like I, right. I can't even wrap my mind around the idea of not watching. <laughs> right. Yeah, yeah. I'm with you. Like I'll watch it till the day it's dead, but like it's not giving me a lot of life at the moment. Right. You know. Yep. Yep. It's. <laughs> I absolutely agree with you. And I really thought like with them bringing everybody back. Yeah. That I was like, this feels like they're gonna wrap it up. Everybody's having their moments. But the show must go on. <laughs> so I guess they're gonna continue. <laughs> and look, if the show continues, it keeps the hope alive of you guys getting to be on the show exactly. right like that's exactly. where the silver lining is because hopefully yeah. you guys get to get to have a little guest uh appearance is what i was trying to say what um who's been your favorite <laughs> who's been your favorite gray's guest that you guys have had on your show oh you know who was like awesome i mean we've had a few that i really really liked but i think unexpected was um kim raver who plays teddy oh yeah but like Giacomo is uncomparable. We, okay, Becca and I show up to the Scray's Anatomy like Paley Fest, like the Paley Fest was like fan fest, and we were on the press line, so we were like in front of all these professionals, and we show up in our scrubs and like our iPhones to like do like interviews and videos with these people, and a, a big chunk of them like walk by and we're like, who are these girls? <laughs> and Giacomo like did a whole scene with us. He was like, yeah. he's a happy. Oh, like he was so down to just be so fun and cool so i like giacomo is like the ultimate to me yeah love both of them some really i mean everyone i mean i will say i will say there were no lemons like everyone was great we yeah. haven't had any experiences where we we're like well that ruins everything like right. if anything it made us like them more 
yeah. What would you guys say are the best seasons? Because I started watching Grey's a few months ago, and then I had to stop around season five because I was watching at a rapid pace. Right? Like yeah. I would, I was clocking in like two seasons. It was, a week. it was like it was, al- it was alarming. Like she, <laughs> no, got, like she really fell alarming. into like a into like a hole, and where she would be texting me at three in the morning, being like, "I'm still watching, and I can't turn it off." And I like, fell into I, a dark hole, yeah. and I had to stop because I was like actually depressed. And Grey's Anatomy was just making it so much worse. I was like, I can't. She I've kept died. thinking she was like really sick. I've diagnosed myself with every disease <laughs> under the sun like it was it was turning sour fast but i have I, I keep saying this that i have to get back into it because i feel like i'm at a better place now that maybe i can handle it again mm-hmm. but what do you guys think are like the best seasons i mean those seasons that you watched are like some of yeah. my Wait, where, yeah where did you leave off what season five five she said oh my gosh yeah so like oh, she hasn't even I, gotten I into like plane thing, crash like she's you know like plane crash she hasn't even seen wait tanya what did you say I did the exact same thing with Grey's Anatomy. I started watching it. I never watched it until, uh, I don't remember the year, obviously, but it was it was so embarrassing. It was a New Year's Eve and I didn't have plans. I remember it very vividly because I was with Brad that day on the 31st and I went home to my apartment and I on New Year's Eve, I started watching from season one, episode one, Grey's Anatomy. And I watched it that whole next day, January 1st. I didn't stop until I was up to the current season. I think it was like 11 or something. So for th- almost four months, I was antisocial. I was FaceTiming Becca every other day crying <laughs> because somebody had died. Yep. Uh, I didn't do anything. I just binged Grace just to be caught up for four months. So like I was totally there with you. It like sucks you in. And like, I'm proud of you for like pulling out of it and giving yourself <laughs> a breather because, because I couldn't do it. And it, it was like not I'm good for probably my like social skills and my mental health because I just didn't do anything else. Exactly. That's what was happening. Like people were highly concerned that I was crushing. I crushed two seasons in a week once. Everyone was like, whoa, <laughs> like you need to take it easy. Right. Because it's also not like how they make TV <laughs> yeah. now. Those early seasons, like you watch it's a new show on Netflix or Hulu or something. and It's like 10 to 13 episodes. Those early seasons of Grey's Anatomy are like 21 to 24 episodes. They have a ton of episodes and they're all an hour long. Yeah, I like was putting a in a lot work. of episodes. But I'm going to get back to it because I obviously I want to get to the plane crash. I want to get to the other people yeah. dying. The, I wanna, shooting, you know. the shooting episodes. Oh my gosh, that's season six. It is kind of funny that and I guess I actually maybe sort of sad too that it's like know deaths that are epi- landmarks. Yeah. It's like, I, oh, you haven't gotten to when this person dies? <laughs> I remember when I was younger, my mom used to watch Grey's every Thursday night. Uh, well, she would record it Thursday night and watch it on Friday morning when my dad was at work and she didn't work on Fridays so some days I would stay home from school because I'd be like oh what's this show she's watching I kind (laughs) of want to see what's good and I remember the shooting episode I don't know why I just well as a child that you'll remember that I was like I gotta watch this show later on in life (laughs) yeah (laughs) absolutely but wait I'm curious because y'all are y'all are big bachelor bachelor fans are y'all what are y'all's thoughts for this upcoming season um oh, look we <laughs> no no it's because i uh, i will say and this is kind of a little gray's anatomy-esque in the fact that like it just was going on for so long unfortunately with the pandemic like the way they scheduled everything there was no break like it went um like immediately back in the fall and then into the winter and then into mm-hmm. matt like there was there was no in between where there's like you get a couple weeks where you're not watching. So, um, and we do a, a live show called Cutting Stems every Monday after the episode at 10 p.m. live from our studio. So, at, like, we were doing it for so long, we were like kind of getting a little bit of burnout. And these yeah. last few weeks without it, we were like, wow, this has just been a little refreshing. <laughs> and now we're like, we're, and now we know that it's gonna, we're, we're doing the same thing because it's going Katie, Paradise. And then Michelle, like they're they doubled up on Bachelorette oh, yeah. seasons again, so there isn't going to be the break in the fall again. It's just so we're like, oh boy, here it comes, here it comes. But I'm <laughs> I'm always excited yeah. because it's just you know I, I will never get tired of the Bachelor. Of course, I mean we get excited every season, but I think on top of that, there was like 
this really negative article that came out about this upcoming season that like kind of painted uh Tasha and Caitlin in a bad light and made it seem like they can't do it without Chris Harrison. Remember the article I'm yeah, talking yeah. about? Yeah, yeah. It was there's, very there hasn't it been was great very discourse weird. around there, yeah, it. Like around this new season there's just been like weird talks about like what happened at on the show. I, I kid you not like we saw people being like it's too much female energy. Yeah. Which is like ridiculous it's kind of like a weird uh, narrative to put out there before the season even airs yeah being like the, how the, do they even the, know like who wrote it who wrote the article um so i think there was one on like page six and maybe i, I, I think and then e there was what yeah being like sources are saying that the male contestants felt like they missed out because they didn't have that father figure and chris harrison and that the energy between like Tasha and caitlin got like competitive with Katie because everyone it was like it, it just all seemed like such bullshit that the that those three women like couldn't all have their Shine, moments yeah. <laughs> and it was like okay I feel like that's a little far fetched yeah they created like this weird narrative around it like you said that yeah. like Katie couldn't fully shine to her full potential because Tasha and Caitlin have big personalities. big personalities and so that takes away from Katie or whatever and we were just kind of like well, why can't they all exist and yeah. these 30 men are crying about not having enough men there's more men than women there's 30 men <laughs> there like, no, what? That's what I was about to say. and like i mean their expectations for how often they're gonna see chris harrison was kind of skewed like someone lied to them because unless chris harrison's more like involved with the bachelor like when the guy's on the bachelor but like you don't see him a ton it's like he comes exactly. in exactly and then he kind of goes <laughs> Yeah. So Becca, I don't know how what do you father figure they're talking about? <laughs> how do you look back on your time on on The Bachelor? I had I mean I had the best time of my both seasons. Like I had the best time of my life, but I I think I'm I'm really grateful to be able to say that cuz I know yeah. some people don't really feel that way, but um I just am glad I went when I did because I feel like it kind of, even though I, I watch it, I never watched it before I went on it, and I watch it now, like, every season, but it, it would just be hard to go on and, like, fully embrace the experience without thinking about, like, am I going to have enough followers to, like, be an influencer after this, you know, like, I didn't, we didn't even talk about Instagram or anything, like, when it got off, I was like, oh, cool, like, more people get to see my blurry weirdly filtered photos on instagram you know <laughs> yeah because that was what it was but like was at the time the yeah the whole thing is very um it's just it's different now and i do think that there's been like i don't know if it's because claire what went what went down with claire all happened so quickly and then the response to that is like oh okay. people were like oh katie season is kind of like Claire's like she she ended early or something who knows it's all speculation that's at this point until we until we watch it but like you said the show has changed a lot since um when yeah. you were on it and I think that like right now we're in such a evolution like it's such a, a period of change for that show and like there's just so many conversations that are happening that like need to happen and they're still trying to like find where they belong you know i think they just are yeah. still trying to like put their right foot forward i mean it's a show that started when things were very different and so mm -hmm. they're adjusting and um i'm excited i mean i'm excited i love caitlin and Tasha, so i'm yeah, excited to see too. the dynamic with having two like women kind of lead lead the way me too Be i'm fun. really i'm really excited for that tanya do you watch all the seasons or do you like kind of tune in and out you know it's interesting i used to love the bachelor and i like I am kind of bummed that I liked it so much because when I was watching this last season, I just felt so much about like women fighting and like their yeah. drama between the women. And I'm like, this is not what I, it's not what I'm about. It's not what I like. It's not what I like to watch. And that's why I don't really watch like the housewives either. Cause I just feel like it's all about like these like women like fighting with each other. And I don't know, like it just kind of left a, I don't yeah. know, just this like taste in my mouth where I'm like, I don't really want to be, like right. The fact that I've been thinking this is entertainment for so long is bothering me. Yeah, I, I, t I totally understand. I still where love you're the drama. From. I can't. Yeah. I can't deny. <laughs> I can't sit here and lie and say I well, don't. This no. season, this last season was different. Like, yeah. I yeah. Love oh, that. I didn't like, love I this love, last like, season. They do. It's like fun to an extent. Sometimes they take it a little far, but this last season was like extreme. It was yeah. too much. It was I, too I stopped, much I stopped watching. Fun. Like, I think maybe the after the first week, I was like. 
camp. Yeah. This one well, wasn't one fun weekend, drama. Just, uh, yeah, everybody did feel like too. that too. It wasn't like the 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 petty drama that you're like, oh, this is like kind of it, it's kind of stupid. This was drama that you were like, oh, this is mean. mean. Yeah, like people were <laughs> just being yeah. mean. Um. So yeah, and 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 it's interesting though because I think that like it, it comes back to what I was saying. The show kind of has to find their identity again because I think they really made it come off like that on purpose. Because yeah. look at all the girls from Matt's season that like, especially the ones that live in New York, are all best, best friends. friends. They all hang out all the time. It's like you watch the show, you'd be like, "Ooh, I would have thought all these girls hated each other," but here they are, like all hanging out all the time like supporting each other going out going to dinner like look like looking like they're having so much fun and they're always like yeah we had fun on the show i don't know what you guys are talking about <laughs> so I yeah don't know. Well, i follow a bunch of them on instagram and i'm like i feel so deceived like <laughs> yeah i sat there right? with, like these girls no one's friends and they're all like best friends like sex in the city life in la yep it I is mean, New York. Yeah, <laughs> no, will. I know. It's crazy. We shall see what happens next season. I'm very interested to see what happens. But before we wrap up, Tanya, I want to talk to you about your moment with Harry Styles because <laughs> I <laughs> could not be any more jealous of everything that went on and also very proud of you. And I think that the whole thing was so cool. And so cool. I heard your story about how he called you up after and I thought that what a class act. Like, really literally an cried. amazing guy. I literally yeah. cried watching all of your videos, the interviews the whole thing was so unreal so congrats on that that must have been such a huge moment but please what you know what was he like what did he smell like Give was everything about him Ta- okay me the details. can i tell you that thank you for saying all of those things because i was a nervous wreck going into that entire situation because i had never met harry styles before i knew that he he's harry styles do you know what i mean like he's this huge name and i he's very artistic and i haven't really seen a lot of interviews of him interacting with people in a, in a, in a long form. And so I was like really nervous going into it because I do know how I can be like, I can, my personality is kind of like a lot and it sometimes doesn't gel well with like really artsy artists, you know, because yeah. they're just chiller. So I was really nervous going into it and I, uh, I will never forget because they basically like obviously before every show they want you to meet the art you know the person that you're going to be talking to so his manager came up and said um do you want to come in you know harry wants to meet you Do you want to come to the dressing room so i went up to the dressing room he couldn't have been like warmer came in for a hug um was like can i get you a drink like do you want a drink or something and i was like no I was like maybe after like i do the you know like i'm hosting this thing da, da, da. um but he was like so sweet and then we go down and we start the interview and you could tell like that he was just so happy that i actually i think that like i think when musicians all they really they really care when people know their work and i think the fact that i had told him like that that falling was a song that like was really resonating with me and it was doing all of these things and it was so crazy because we basically so we did the interview and then we finished the interview and then i went into the audience and then he did his like he did his set he was only supposed to perform I think he was only supposed to perform three songs or four songs, but he added falling in for me because he was oh. like, I'm going to add this in. Like he wasn't supposed to do it. Chills. And he's like, I wasn't supposed to do it. And you know how like all these things go. They yeah. have to get everything pre-approved by everybody. Everybody's like on board. These are like broadcasting live. And so everybody like on the iHeart team was so stoked because they got like an extra song out of him, you know? Yeah. And he like looked over at me and said like, you know, this one's for you. And I was just like, this is the craziest. I have tears coming from my yeah, three, yeah. I, She's straight up crying. I, I there's like a like we went to see him in in L. A. The one night um in four the one night. This isn't about us. No, this I know, I know, Tanya. I know. But I'm just I'm just saying like I'm just giving context on how much Rhea loves him. That we went to this show in L. A. And I wake up the next morning and she's in her hotel room. I'm in mine and she sends me a selfie beat red her eyes she's sobbing and it's the morning after and she's like i just can't stop thinking about that show and i was like holy shit I- i'm not even that bad <laughs> no i get it now like i get it because he put a spell on me like i'm not even joking in like the most beautiful way and it's so funny because my boyfriend is like the least jealous person he's like the least jealous man like it's actually kind of annoying <laughs> um but there's this video of harry styles like looking at me and like winking and he always references it because he thinks that he was like flirting with me and he like always talks about this video and I'm like, he, he probably never sing like he's never like 
ever questions anything, but that video in particular, he always is like, yeah, he was flirting with you. Oh, yeah. I, I've watched that yeah, video styles. more no, times than No, but then, so then we, we're count. done, right? So the concert's over. I, I was just like, you're so amazing. You're the best. Thank you for like, you know, making me look so good in front of all my bosses. Like he was so kind. And then I get a phone call that night from Harry Styles basically saying thank you so much for a great interview thank you for being a fan you're welcome to any stop on my tour this was back when he was still still yeah. going on the tour pre pandy and um it was just a quick conversation and just so nice i never had any artist do that for me ever and i was like i will be i'm your biggest cheerleader i'm your biggest fan from now on forever like i will champion him my whole life obsessed what an absolute angel like that is exactly who i imagine harry styles is and that video you're talking about i've watched like i said more times than i can count i remember sending it to fran being like did you see the way he looked at her mm -hmm. did you see that i would have fainted to the ground that is uh, that is unreal i'm so happy for you like at least one of us gets to experience that you know that's awesome like, I, I, just, I did the same it's thing unreal. when he performed at the it's grammy crazy. after that i had a new appreciation for tanya's moment with him i was like that man looked at you and then he called you like wow i didn't expect him to be so um so kind and like gracious because he doesn't have to be you know right. like he's already at the top of his game people swoon for him all the time and he's like above and beyond so nice and i'm like it's it's yeah it's because pretty awesome some artists they feel you know i'm so and so so i don't really need to go out of my way to be nice to this person they they should feel honored to be around me but he's like totally I need to go out of my way to make sure this woman knows she did a great job and that I appreciate her. And that's why we love mm -hmm. Harry Styles. Yeah. And that's why he's on our wall. We yeah. have on our wall, Harry Styles is my therapist. So it's, <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah, no, we. Well, how about this? How about this? When he does go back on tour eventually, I'm assuming he's going to tour this album or something. Oh, I have let's tickets. Co let's try and coordinate <laughs> a way like for us to go to the show together and like figure some things out. Guys, come Please. to come to e either new york or la so i had tickets to the sh to the fine line tour before it got canceled and it got postponed yeah um so all the dates just got rescheduled so right now i have like five days of just fangirl pop madness in october october 2nd is a jones brothers show october 4th is harry styles at msg and then october 5th is another jones brothers show in new jersey i'm going to all of Catch them me <laughs> only at the harry styles one possibly the jonas Brothers one but i'm actually down for new york harry styles mo. harry styles me msg Wait, so october 4th it's official back and they like yeah that's, that's happening yeah i mean I, I i would assume so only because they rescheduled all the dates and as of right now like if i go into my Ticketmaster app it still says the ticket's good to go and they're like they're having <laughs> as of right now i would think so like they have the msg totally full almost totally full now for like the knicks games and things like that so i think like come october we should be good put it on the calendar Circle ladies. It, october Circle 4th <laughs> Okay, so it's wow. October. Yes. Okay, Becca, let's get on that because that, really, that, yeah, that could be really, yeah, really fun. Yeah, it could be really fun. We would love that. We would have. I a can blast. try and finagle. I can try and finagle some sort of situation. I don't really <laughs> know. I feel like I could have definitely done it before the pandemic, but now I feel like everything's so backed up and people, yeah. you know what I mean? Like, I don't know. No, how, you got how, this. You got this. Yeah, we've yeah. got a good time. <laughs> yeah, we, we, Bria's like, you can I'm absolutely not do it. Don't worry. Much. I'm not asking for much. We don't, we, you know, just, <laughs> just throwing it out there. That oh, we man. believe in you, Tanya. <laughs> yes. You can okay. do anything. <laughs> you can do anything you put your mind to. Uh, thank That's you, true. ladies, so much for joining us. We love you guys. We appreciate yeah. you guys so much. And we're so happy that you finally made it on the show. Um, everybody, check out Scrubbing In with Becca and Tanya. And, you know, let everyone know what else you got going on. Both yeah. of you are always so doing much. so much. So. <laughs> I mean, well, anything I'm doing, you can find on Instagram uh, at Becca Tilly. And mostly just listen to our podcast. Yeah. That's, what, that's what we really want. <laughs> yeah, same podcast. And you can find me at Tanya Rad. I'm posting whatever I'm doing there. It's usually one-off things. But um, one -off, really, really happy cool to things. be here. And we need to get you guys on Scrubbing In. Yes, exactly. absolutely. absolutely. We would love to. We would love to. And hopefully, hopefully the scrubbers, like, forgive me for, <laughs> for yeah, you know, three our, years this ago. This is our olive branch, our peace <laughs> offering. We're all, it's all good. Oh, man. <laughs> well, no, it's we're so excited because I do think that our fans, like, love you guys, too. So I think they're gonna all going to be really excited that we're finally doing this because um, the 
the pool of girls, it's just, I think our, our fans want everybody to like do stuff together. I think our fans get the most excited when we have other women, like female podcasts on our show. They're like, oh my God, we love both of these shows. We're so happy that you guys are doing this together. So we're so happy that you guys are here and hopefully we get to hang in person again soon. I know. Yeah. Let us know when you're in LA. We can do an in person yeah. podcast. Absolutely. Thank you guys okay. so much. Sure. We need to get to New York. I know. Well, October, well, October 4th. Yeah. Yeah. We got room, <laughs> for, we got room for you guys <laughs> right, right here. <laughs> thank you guys so much for coming uh, on. Thank All you. Right. Guys. Bye, ladies. Bye. 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 All right, that wraps up today's episode of Chicks in the Office. We hope you guys have a fantastic weekend. Enjoy that warm weather. Summer is finally here. And just a reminder, if you're watching on YouTube, hit that subscribe button. We really appreciate all the people who are subscribing. And if you're listening on Apple or Spotify, wherever you listen to podcasts, make sure you subscribe there as well. We love you guys. We appreciate you. And we'll talk to you on Monday.